Listen. Hey everyone, this is Nick and I'd like to welcome you to the Dataflow Collection. In this video, we're going to go over how to set up Flink on CDP Data Center and use it to process real-time transactions coming from a Kafka data source. To start off, you'll see we have a data center set up with three hosts. This specific deployment has many services installed, but the ones we'll be looking at today are Flink, Kafka, and briefly Yarn. In the case of your deployments not currently running Flink, you'll simply need to add the parcel and deploy it. To do this, within Cloudera Manager, go to Clusters, Parcels. We'll need to add our new repository here, and then distribute and activate the parcel across the machines. Once this is done, you'll want to go into your cluster and add the service. With the service added, we'll need to take the same version of Flink and push the jar file to a specific file directory on our host machine and change the owner to Cloudera SCM. Now just restart the Cloudera SCM server and export the Java home path and you're good to go. For this example, we're going to follow one of the tutorials that we've linked down below. We won't focus too much on the code itself as that's beyond the scope of this video, but the code is available via Git for anyone that wants to see it or follow along. We're going to take a step back to talk about how you would leverage Flink in a real world scenario by putting ourselves in the shoes of a massive online retail store. This store can have tens of millions of individual items with thousands of transactions happening every second. We'll show how you can use Flink to keep each item's quantity updated by writing logic that runs real time on a stream. First, we're going to create a steady stream of transactions that we're generating at random through the use of a Flink job pushing into Kafka. We'll then set up another Flink job to do the processing of the transactions by subscribing to that Kafka stream. For each piece of data that we'll be producing, we'll create a transaction ID, a transaction time, a randomized item ID, and the quantity being bought or sold. We'll be using this data in the other Flink job that we'll be deploying, which we're going to call Transaction Processor. This code runs logic that will take each one of these transactions and use the item ID as a key for which item's state to be updated. This state represents the current inventory of the item, and this logic can now update the inventory status to reflect the changes from items being bought or sold. So now that we've taken a quick tour of the logic, all we have to do is compile our code using Maven. This will boil it all down to a single jar that we can copy to our cluster. We'll also be using an options file so that we can pass along Kafka configurations, such as the broker addresses easily, without having to recompile. Heading over to the Streams Messaging Manager, our UI for interacting with Kafka, we're going to set up a topic named transaction log one, which is also what we've told our transaction logic to read from. You can see this in the properties file that we also pushed over along with the jar. With our topic created, we can now go ahead and run the Flink job that will begin generating data into our Kafka stream. Once it submits the job, we can go check our yarn applications to see that our new Flink job is running. We can also go into the Flink dashboard to see that the Kafka generator is working correctly. Here you can see additional processing metrics displayed at the bottom. If you're more of a command line person, we can also tap directly into the Kafka topic to see a real-time stream of the transactions being generated. Now that we have data flowing through, it's time to start up the Flink job that will execute our logic on the transactions. Since we have all our logic already compiled into the jar we pushed, all we need to do is run another Flink job on our cluster. With the job submitted and running, we can once again jump into the Flink dashboard to take a look at both the running Flink jobs. Here you can see that we have our transaction source from earlier, now sending the data into the transaction processor. On the bottom, you can see the amount of records sent by the source as well as received by the processor. We've only been running for a few minutes, but we've already processed millions of transactions. Flink also allows us to check the specific application checkpointing information. Checkpointing is a powerful feature that gives Flink the ability to recover states and helps provide more fault-tolerant stream processing while also giving you insight into the current status of your application. These can also be checked externally through the Flink API. You can now take the same framework and apply it to any streaming data concept. The combination of Kafka and Flink is also extremely scalable, so as a user, you can focus mainly on your business logic. You can also easily publish to Kafka streams using other environments, such as NiFi. Thanks a lot for watching today. Please let us know in the comments if there are any topics that you'd like us to cover, and subscribe to be notified whenever any new videos are released.
If you have any questions, you can always head to the Cloudera community, where there is a large knowledge base there to help you overcome any challenges along the way. We'll provide a link in the description below.